Excellent. Good. 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 Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We're back with Kayla. We typically would be training our handgun at this point, but you're kind of past that by now, right? We've been at it for a year. At this point, yes. And as long as you keep practicing, you don't really need me anymore for that. But we have, I understand, purchased for James a folding carbine pistol caliber. Right. I feel like every household, if you have firearms in there, you kind of have a bucket list or a wish list of what you want to add to it, you whether do. it's for fun or if it's for home defense. And my husband, James, this was on his wish list. So it was a nice little gift for him, but if yeah. he's going to use it, I want to be able to use it as well. <laughs> so yeah, there, this is a great example from Smith, the mm -hmm. FPC. Um, let's do this first. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's talk about uh, pistol caliber carbines in general. Okay. You're going to find mainly two schools of thought. One is they're awesome. The other one is if you need a carbine, get something with a rifle caliber, mm -hmm. say 556, 300 blackout, like that. And I can see both sides of that argument. I really can. But there's some things I think that people say or believe related to guns that are true for them. I get it, but I live in the city. Mm -hmm. You live in the city. Correct. If you go like this, you could touch my neighbor's house, okay? <laughs> if you start launching five, five, six rounds around the neighborhood, Lord forbid in the event you need to do that, that's not good. They are not gonna stay in your walls. One of the first videos we did illustrated that very clearly. One of the advantages that you have with a pistol caliber carbine is it penetrates less. Mm -hmm. Another advantage is it's cheaper to train with. It shoots nine mil or pistol ammo, depending on the one you make, 40, right. 10, however you want to do it, but it's cheaper. Another issue with it is, is it's easier to control because you have three points of contact usually with the weapon system, so it's steadier, it's more forgiving. They're typically more accurate because of the longer sight sort of radius on the weapon. So they got some things going for them. Mm -hmm. They also have some disadvantages. One, like we talked about, the relatively low stopping power of pistol ammunition, period. Now, here comes some controversy. You would think that if you have a longer barrel, your ammo would become more efficient, meaning faster, more powerful. That's not necessarily true. We're going to do a video after this where we'll try to prove or disprove that concept. Okay. But one of the things people are not super aware of in the gun world is that your typical nine millimeter bullet, whether it's a range rounder like this or one made for self-defense, they're made to optimize the performance with a four and a half inch barrel, pistol barrel, because that's what 90% of it does, right. right? So it's not necessarily true with this, if you stretch the barrel, you get an increase in power. So it actually could create a drag. Huh. So we're going to make a video later on and test some speeds and stopping power out of different length barrels. Okay. Okay. So you have a better picture when we're done about whether it's more powerful or whether it's not. Now, let's talk real world. A lot of these, for instance, this is your Smith folding carbine, came in a bag, right? Looks yes. like a luggage bag or camera bag. And it folds, we'll show you how to do all of that. It's got some cool features to it, but it's kind of heavy. Wouldn't you agree? It's something I'm not used to yet, but I'm hoping to yeah. with plenty of practice. So if you guys decide to keep going down the pistol caliber carbine road, yes. one of the things you must keep in mind so you don't waste a lot of money and time is try to have a good concept of what the gun was designed to do. Caltech makes one called a sub 2000 that folds kind of backwards on itself. Mm -hmm. And it looks for all the world like a backpack gun. You could put it in a backpack. I know you and James do a lot of hiking. You could do something similar with this, right? Right. Okay, so I'm gonna give this to you. Make mm -hmm. sure it's clear, of course. And when we do, I want you to kind of go through how you fold it. And okay. then we'll get an overall footprint of it when it's folded up. Right. Okay, but it's clear. Yep. 
Good. Go ahead and fold her up so everybody at home can see it. Okay. So right here. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Now, yeah, great. If you didn't catch that, let me borrow this back, Kayla. Yep. The charging handle actually goes in to one of the rails and holds it in place. Mm -hmm. Kind of a cool little invention in my mind. So if you can, safely go ahead and unfold it again and we'll just lay it back on the table, okay? So you can see, backpack gun. Which as it turns out, go ahead, you and James do a lot of, right? We do, So yes. it makes sense, you could put that in a backpack and because of the nature of your clothes, perhaps while you're hiking, mesh, shorts, lighter shirt, whatever, mm -hmm. it's not super handy to have that, is it? No, it's not. But if you threw that in a backpack, you would have lots of firepower, more reach potentially, interesting design, right? Right. You'll notice the magazines, you can store them in the back, it makes it heavy, right? And when they're fully loaded, yes, the makes magazines. It, <laughs> makes it backwards heavy, right? Yes. So a lot of people wouldn't like that. Right. If they're gonna deal with weight, they wanna deal with it on the muzzle because it actually helps keep the recoil down. Okay. Who cares, right? I mean, real world, how much does it recoil to begin with? Not very much, mm -hmm. right? So this is more odd. It just makes it a little more unwieldy, perhaps. Right. One of the other downsides, if there's gonna be one, for everybody out there, the internet experts, is the magazine goes in the handle. Some people don't like that. Okay. They would rather have the well somewhere more like a conventional style AR where you can see it quick. You don't have to come off with so much of your shooting position to get the magazine in. And it would be what some would consider a downside to that particular gun. Okay? Got it. Now. I, I just think that we chose this just because we have multiple Smiths. We're getting yeah. there. Yeah, so. Perfect, perfect okay. statement at the perfect time. Right. So these are M&P compatible mags, right? Correct, yes. And so you could throw any M&P mag in this guy and you're good to go. Yeah. Lots of weapon systems say, like the Palmetto State Armory, we're gonna go over here in a second, also function off of Glock mags. So if you have a okay. Glock, most of the world does, you can take your Glock mag, put it in your pistol caliber carbine and off you go. Right. I believe it was a fella on the Brownells channel called that the modern day cowboy setup where your cowboy ammunition fits your rifle ammunition, so you don't have to worry about getting mixed up. Right. It all works together. It's an excellent feature to that when you're already in the Smith family, right? Mm -hmm. Makes total sense. Okay. So here's the thing. We're gonna keep going down the table as far as styles of pistol caliber carbines. Okay. Okay, so this is the one from Palmetto State Army, Armory, sorry. This has a folding stock from Law Tactical. You wouldn't typically get that on the Palmetto State. And you can see that the nature of this cat is he's a lot more sinister looking, right? <laughs> Correct. It's got a dot, we'll put a dot on yours in a second. Okay. Flashlight, da da da. You can see just from the way this guy is constructed that this dude is more for an offensive kind of mindset than perhaps a defensive backup of the other folding carbine that you have. Okay. But you can make that work. Mm -hmm. Now, with the Palmetto State or any other sort of AR carbine like this, believe it or not, despite it looks pretty similar in size to the rest of them, this, according to the ATF, is actually a handgun. Can you explain that? Sure. <laughs> okay. So this is a rifle. This is a handgun. Now, What's interesting about, if you get on the ATF website, uh, website, and I encourage everybody to do that, to look this up for yourself, the main thing, according to them, that makes this a handgun is it's designed to be fired by one hand or with one hand. And most of the people that are new to this would go, how can that possibly be? Right. Well, what you have here is a forearm brace. And keep in mind, back to identity, this sort of thing was originally designed for one-armed veterans to be able to shoot something cool like this, ARs that they were used to while they put the brace on their forearm. Okay. Okay, now what you commonly see though is people take this and they tuck it into their shoulder real tight and they use it like one of these other two will go over later on. Mm -hmm. That could potentially be considered by the ATF making this a short barreled rifle, okay? Now, short barrel rifle definition is the barrel is less than 10 inches long. Mm -hmm. And the weapon system, the rifle, is less than 26 inches long overall. Okay. Now, why do we care about this the distinction is because you have to have an ATF stamp to own these. You have to be going through the process, pay the $200 to get the stamp or the tax to own these. Okay. These are a controlled item. 
Okay. Interesting, yeah. So knowing the definition could potentially keep you out of trouble if you were gonna go into a private sale. If you know somebody, he shouldn't do that because it's also gonna get him in a ton of trouble. Mm -hmm. But you have to kind of pay attention to sort of the ins and outs of what makes things a short barrel rifle versus a handgun. Got it. Now here's where I'm a fan of pistol carbines is home defense. Even though we spent a lot of time in the last year talking about how to work that pistol yes. out in public for everyday carry, it's probably one of the worst decisions you can make for home defense. There's just better ways to get that done. Whether it's shotgun, rifle caliber carbine, or something like this, it's gonna work a lot better for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're just more forgiving and it's harder to make accurate shots with a handgun than it is obviously with something that works more like a rifle. Right, and at home, I'm not gonna be wearing this all the time. Nope. You know, maybe when I just get home, yes, right. of course. Right. But if I can't get to my personal firearm, normally in a household that has firearms, you st strategically put them in different areas. So I recommend. If this is going to be one of them, I wanna make sure I know how to hold it, how to operate it safely. Sure, sure, and it will do the same thing. Okay. It will. Now, so let's do this. Let's start with yours, okay? Got it. And we won't shoot for very long. We'll just try a few of them. I already have the mags loaded up. I'll help you if you have questions with the operating system safeties before we begin. Okay. I know you're somewhat familiar with a couple of them, but we'll just get ears and eyes on, shoot a little bit. We'll take a break. I'll throw the aim point on yours so you can see what that gun would be like with the dot. Yes. Okay. And then maybe we'll switch to something more like a scope if we get the time. Okay. Okay. That's now, great. before we begin, you're gonna notice not just the difference in trigger pull and press and the poundage on the trigger. Mm -hmm. You're gonna notice that despite the fact this is shooting the same nine millimeter ammunition, they recoil completely differently. Okay. There are going to be subtle differences, mm -hmm. not only in how much recoil you feel, but in how it does it. Okay. Okay, well, here we go. Ears and eyes and we'll start. You can just work with the steel, okay? Okay. As long as you promise not to shoot the cameras. I'll do my best not to. <laughs> and go, and please go short, medium, and long. You know, take some longer shots, which would be the whole intention of this to begin with, okay? okay. As you go, I'll start asking you questions as long as it's not too distracting about feedback, what you like, don't like about the sights, and then we'll go from there, okay? Okay. Now, okay, let's see so, how we have our hand, like so. Yeah. Just, just my own personal experience, okay? okay? There's a lot of people run that system well, just like that. Mm -hmm. I don't happen to be one of them. What well, I do is overdrive and it doesn't the come, gun. It doesn't come with this grip. Okay. So that's something that we added onto it just because we had one. Perfect. I overdrive with that thing. Okay. A lot of people, I'm not gonna take your grip off the gun, but most people would put their finger in a C or their hand in a C and their index finger along the muzzle. Okay. Just so. try that. And what you're gonna notice is when you transition from target, it actually helps because you're just kind of pointing your finger. Oh, Obviously okay. you wanna make sure your finger doesn't go out over the end of the barrel, which would be pretty hard for you anyway. Right. But you see that C we're gonna use just yeah. to transition between targets, okay? Okay. So go ahead and shoot a little bit and tell me what you think. Good hits. Good. Right down the middle. Excellent job. Good, go ahead and put the weapon on safe for me. Good, and we're gonna bring it down. Okay. That's very good right there. Kayla, every time the weapon goes down off the target, we wanna work the safety. Got it, Whether yep. it's this, AR, or whatever, okay? okay? So, perfect job with that. Now, what do you think so far about the accuracy? Recoil doesn't seem like it's bothering you at all. It's not bothering me. I think because I've taken it out just a couple times, I'm almost used to it a little bit. Sure, sure, sure. But I still, I'm not familiar with the position of where it should be on my shoulder. That's something that I still need to work on. Sure, so one of the issues that lady shooters has is there's not a lot of pocket here. Right, yeah. Right. So you're always gonna search for that. And the other thing is, this re is relatively flat right down the bore line, right? It right. This part here doesn't stick up much. Okay. So it looks like to me, you're kind of trying to mash down, right? Mm -hmm. So if you put it a little bit higher in the shoulder, it would help with that some, but you can also do it too much yeah. And you lose that sort of sweet spot, okay? So just experiment a little bit. And this time we're just gonna transition out to targets, okay? Okay. So we'll go short, medium, and long for a couple shots each. Got it. Good. Good. 
Good. Good. Excellent. Good. 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 You can go ahead and put the safety on. Okay. So, Kayla, one of the things I noticed was that, especially on the far target, we're managing the trigger like we kind of would the equalizer, right? Yeah. Because you correct. have to. Right. Believe it or not, you of course, you can mash the trigger with any platform or jerk the trigger. Absolutely can. But this is a little more forgiving. Okay. So this time through, real quick, what I want you to do is just not worry so much about delicate and just make it happen. Sort of like you're trying to scratch yourself when you really... Okay. Right? Okay. I know that's a weird analogy, right? Mm-hmm. But speed up, and you'll see how forgiving it is. Right now, it's hard to tell because we're moving really slow, right? Right. Now, ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. See how it goes. Okay? See the sights? Two press. on each target? Yep. Or Okay. See the sights? Press the trigger. Okay. Good. Good. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. It okay. just works. Okay. Because of the stability of the system. Got it. Okay. Yep. Challenge is remembering that when you transition from platform to platform. It's not easy to do. That's why one of the reasons why three gun is hard. Got it. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Well, let's play with some more of our toys, okay? Okay. We talked about the Palmetto State Armory. Okay. Yeah. This works exactly like your AR, which is one of the reasons why I like it, because it's a transferable skill should you decide to get into 5.56. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, real basically, what you have is, I'm going to make sure your dot's on. So, once again, pop up sights. Okay. You'll notice we have a dot, though. Right. We'll put a dot on yours for later on because these, these believe it or not, should be for backup. Got it. On yeah, a pistol caliber sense. carbon. Okay, but no worries. So, you have, of course, we talked about your Glock mag, right? Safety. Right here. Okay. So once again, every time we're out of the shoulder, we're going to put it back on safe. And it works exactly the same way, but you'll see totally different animal related to recoil. So where and should I can, put my support hand on this one? If you can, right along the side here. Okay. Good. Okay. Got it. You there? I believe so, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Something comfy like that, okay? Got it. Now, when you find the target, go ahead and pop up. Make sure your sights are on good and you can see them clearly. Yep. Okay. Now you'll notice if we tuck this in, like we talked about, that would be a rifle, right? Right. So we're going to try to do our best with that right there. Okay. And you're going to see that makes it different right away. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and take it off safe. Okay. Go ahead and just fire whenever you're ready. Try to get used to the gun a little bit. Good. 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 Weapon on safe. Totally okay. different critter than the folding carbine from Smith, right? Yeah, definitely. What do you think? So far, I like the Smith & Wesson just a little bit better. It shoots softer, doesn't it? Shoots it shoots softer, yes. There's yeah. a little bit more oomph to this one. It's shocking how sharp the recoil is from something that weighs that much, right? Right, yep. Yours just handles it better, and I totally agree. I've shot both. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. I think I want to rest like my chin or my and face. And that would be okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I feel like it just needs to have some point of contact. Yep. Now we're going to do our rush through. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. See how okay. that goes. Okay. okay. Whenever you're ready, up and go. Good. <laughs> Click no bang. Click no bang. Okay. Keep it pointed in a safe direction. We're going to remove the magazine. Now. I'm going to stiff your hands for me. Okay. That's because she was empty. Got it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. What do you think of that one? I mean, I like it. I don't know if it's something that I would be comfortable with for my own personal firearm. Mm -hmm. Because? Um, I think I'm just used to the grip for one. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more power and recoil, I feel like, with this one. Yeah. It's a little bit more difficult to... Uh, I'd say go from safe to hot. Yep. I don't know. It's the just ergonomics a little bit... aren't there for you. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. So let's move on. Okay. Real quick. This is the storm. Mm -hmm. Here's your safety. Okay. 
Okay. When you see it poke through on the other side, the red, red is dead as far as Beretta is concerned. What you're going to do is insert the magazine in the handle, and this is your charging handle for this particular weapon, okay? Okay. There's no bolt you can grab, no charging handle, except for this right here. Okay, you'll notice, right? And to release it, it's back here. Got it. Okay, I'm going to give this to you. Here's your magazine. Okay. Now, well, there whoa, it goes. Oh. let's do this over again. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you'll see? You just inadvertently got on to why a lot of people don't like that okay. to go in the handle because it's right. kind of not not smooth. It's a little wonky. Right? right. Now, so while we're on safe, you're going to reach up here forcefully with your left hand and pull that handle to the rear and let it go. Awesome. Okay. okay. Now, go ahead and sight the gun for me. You see the big dot? I do, yeah. Okay. Now take it off as safe. Good. Excellent. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just do the same thing. Shoot around a little bit, get used to it, and then go fast. Good. Good. Aim way low. Oh, must be empty. Yep. Okay? See that, that snap and that hop? Mm hmm Just like when we started with the handgun, when you... Right. See, it's the same thing. Okay. But not as much. Okay. Okay. What do you think of this one? I didn't mind this one. Okay. Besides my little magazine issue. <laughs> yeah. So you'll notice, hopefully, at least to me, this shoots more like a rifle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get the idea that you could shoot stuff at 100 plus yards with this thing. Right. I don't get the idea, especially with this one. Okay. Okay. So... The downside, it doesn't fold. Right. It's massive. Mm -hmm. So once again, just like with handguns, if you get stuff, you got to give something away. Right. So I get soft shooter, right? Mm -hmm. But where are you going to backpack with that at? I'm You're not. not. <laughs> right? So let's throw a dot on yours and we'll practice with what you actually have. Okay, we had been running your Smith carbine mm -hmm. uh, with the sights that came on the gun. Those are probably best used for backup. They do co-witness, and I'm a big fan of having a backup plan for a platform like this. Makes total sense. But you're going to find, I think, it increases the speed and capability of the platform if you have a dot. So now we're going to do a little bit of a apples to apples comparison compared to those aperture sights that was slowing you down before. Okay. Okay. So this time what we're going to do, we're used to the gun a little bit, is start off in quick mode with the dot and see how quickly we can go two, 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 two at the three stages. Got it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. It's an aim point. Five MOA green or red dot. It's a wonky color because it's actually mine. We're just trying it out on their rifle. Okay, you ready? Ready. Tuck in there nice and tight and go to the races. Okay. Good. So, has to be at least a five-fold increase in speed? Oh yeah, definitely. Right? I'm almost, I'm used to an optic because that's what I have on my equalizer, so this is, this is nice. Okay, well just for kicks at home, for the people at home, what I want you to do is try to put four in the close target as quickly as possible. Okay. Staying in a relatively acceptable margin of accuracy. Got it. Okay, picture the five inches we always talked about. Okay. About like that. Okay. Okay, that's where we kind of want to be, but I want you to put four in there as quickly as possible. Okay, you ready? Ready. Go. Good. Okay. Okay. Makes it all of a sudden a lot more attractive, doesn't it? Right, I actually really like this. <laughs> yeah, and see? It's a soft shooter. Right. This will totally work. 
And this is a nice optic. I love the fact that it's both green and red because I see better with green. My husband sees better with red. Okay. So if we were to get something like this, this red. would make sense. So we're going to try one more optic, okay? okay? It's totally different than all of this. So we're going to take a little break and come back and throw a different style on there. Got it. Which will help people that have severe astigmatism to their eyes actually see potentially a little better. Okay. Okay. So, Kayla, so far your experience with optics has pretty much been red dots with an emitter. Now, I have a little bit of the same problem you do for a different reason, which is if I'm not wearing my glasses mm -hmm. or these prescription glasses, the dot looks like the massive starburst, right? Right, yeah. That's very common. We've talked before on the channel how they make uh, red dots with astigmatism, uh, sort of relief in them and all this stuff. They work okay, okay, but not super great. So what we have is we've installed this fire field scope onto your carbine. Now, for those of you at home, I would agree this would be not something that you would typically see. This is more of certainly like an AR kind of thing. But what I want you to do is get used to the idea that there are ways that you can get red and green. This one glows red and green. Oh, okay. But the reticle in there is going to be a lot more crisp because it doesn't have any of that sort of technology that causes you to see unclearly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna give this to you. Weapon safe, right? And I just want you to acquire a sight picture, trying to use both eyes. And this is gonna be a little challenging because my instinct, at least when I'm working through this, is to look into the tube, not through it. Okay. Okay, so try to keep both eyes open. Yep. Pretty wild looking reticle, right? It is, definitely. I, as soon as I am using a scope or anything like this, I almost automatically want to close one eye. I don't know why. It's just instinct. Yeah, yeah right. And that's what it takes, takes some getting used to. Right. And you'll sometimes you'll have to close one eye to really see it well. You'll okay. go from two to one to two to one. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and point. Okay. It also magnifies from one to six. Oh, wow. Okay. That's neat. So you don't need a magnifier on there. Okay. This is the one power, right? Yep. That you would typically use. Now go ahead and keep pointing for me. Now watch this. What color is it? That's red. Okay. It also goes to green. Okay. To make it easier to see. It's very crisp. Yeah. Right? Unlike the dot. Yeah. So let's try to run it a few rounds with this okay. and then see what you think of that compared to the dot. Now conceptualize, you can get this a lot smaller, you can get it a lot lighter. This is just one that I, I have just to kind of give you the concept of it. Okay. This would be a bit much for a folding carbine, right? I feel like it, yes. But you can get a version of this that would be a lot more suitable. Okay. Which is a little bit of a concept idea. It definitely puts a little bit more weight on it. Oh yeah, and, and it's kind then... of ungainly, right? And that C grip there, my thumb can't go all no, the way around. Right, right. So, for but, sure. Okay. Okay, so let's load up. You go ahead and load and make ready, and we'll see what you think. Good. What do you think? I like it. Little different way of going about it, right? It is, yeah, definitely. That's something I would definitely be interested in, though. Yeah, and like I said, the cool part is, is you can get different versions of it, right? Right. It doesn't have to be this. There's Vortex and on and on make them. Firefield, of course, does. Okay. Something that would be a little more suitable size-wise, mm -hmm. but you don't always have to see in that pixelated, blurry mess. Okay. You do have to adapt some of your skill set to get used to the tube like you noticed right away. Right, yeah but you can make it work. Okay. So, okay, well, to wrap things up, that's pistol caliber carbines in a nutshell. These are not obviously all the ones that you can get, but they're a pretty good representation of convenience, concealability, shootability. This is kind of how they work. Right. Now, you have a great system there. You wouldn't need to go down the road to anywhere else, but I would like to show you in another video, the short barreled rifle concept. Okay. Okay. They're sort of the same but different, 
And keep in mind, you do have to have an ATF stamp to have one of those weapons, and they're typically more expensive. But if you get the right one, I think you're going to find that it maximizes why it is you would want to have one should you want to sort of commit to that kind of investment. Trust me, it'll be worth your stop. Okay. Okay? So any questions about that? You did great. Weapon works good. We tried some different optics on it. And what I would leave you with is these are a lot better choice for home defense if you're going to use a pistol caliber than your handgun. Right. No, I, that makes I think sense. these things work very well. Okay? Yep. All right. Thanks for coming. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video, okay? Sounds great. Perfect.